this bill. This side certainly won't be. Uh, I call Michael Wood. Well, Madam Speaker, that was a very, very uh, negative speech, I feel, uh, from the member for Botany. And in my comments, I want, more want to focus on the positive pro-growth vision that this government has for Auckland's transport system and the plan and the funding that we are delivering through this very important piece of legislation, something that former government failed to do in its yet nine years of government. But just before moving on to that, I do want to reflect on the member for Botany's uh, comment uh, that the national government, the previous national government, had nine years of track record of delivering for transport in Auckland. And I reflected on this a little bit and I thought, well, let's see what, what the National Party's friends thought of that. And that's always an interesting place to go. Uh, I'd really rather that the, minister, that the member focused on the bill. Oh. Madam the Speaker, I, I, are... I'm, I'm, I'm about to launch into defining the problems that the bill is attempting to solve, and that's by talking about the serious congestion that Auckland faces. And I'm doing that by way of reference to a report that the EMA commissioned last year, an independent report produced by the NZIER, which assessed the congestion crisis that Auckland faced. And here's what it said. It said that 24 per cent of the arterial network in Auckland was congested in the December 2016 quarter, up from 18 per cent in the same period two years ago. Uh, Kim Campbell, the chief executive of the EMA, said what business is telling us is what we're seeing in the numbers is that congestion has worsened exponentially in the past three to five years. He noted that businesses had to hire 20 per cent more staff to carry out the same work. Trucking firms were making fewer runs and taking longer to do so, creating a 30 per cent productivity loss. The chief executive of the National Road Carriers Association, David Aitken, said that the number of cross-town trips possible for transport, whoops, transport firms in a working day had halved in that period uh, slight to only slightly more than three over the previous three years, for, from 2014 to 2017. He noted that of the journeys in the report from the, uh, Pakaranga to the CBD, that journey had increased by 21 minutes, or 45 per cent, and, quote, it's going to get worse. Average speeds on Auckland's arterial roads in the same report. Tristram Ave in the North Coat electorate, 13 kilometres an hour at peak hour. Kyber Pass in the Auckland Central electorate, 18 kilometres an hour. Tiverton, Wolverton, Mayoro in the New, New Lynn electorate, 20 kilometres an hour. Madam Chair, Auckland is a wonderful growing city, but it is choking on its growth because of a failure to in uh, invest in the transport infrastructure that we need. And this government says we need to keep looking forward. We heard in the previous uh, uh, speaker's comments um, a lot about the Waterview Tunnel. That was a project that was supported by all sides of the House. And it's great. It's made an improvement. But that simply doesn't solve Auckland's transport problems. And we've had me recent media reports that say that by November of last year, we're already back to the same congestion that we had before the Waterview Tunnel. Madam Speaker, this bill is about a vision for finally unlocking Auckland. It's about putting forward a clear plan, and it's about actually funding it. And you need all three of those things if we finally want to get Auckland moving. The vision that we have, as I said, Madam Speaker, is a pro-growth vision to get Auckland moving by giving Aucklanders real transport choice. Because what we know at the moment is that too many Aucklanders simply don't have that choice. The previous speaker, Mr Jamie Lee Ross, quite incorrectly stated uh, that the proposed light rail plan from the city centre of Auckland through to the airport apparently magically won't go through South Auckland. Well, the news for him actually is that it does, that there's a big part of South Auckland between the city centre and the airport. And the people of Mangari Bridge and Mangari currently do not have access to modern, high-quality mass transit in our city. And it's this 10-year plan that the government is delivering through the, um, uh, through the agreement that we have with Auckland Council that will actually deliver people those choices in every single part of our city, whether it's those people in Mangari and Mangari Bridge who will have, have access to light rail, whether it's the fast-growing northwest of Auckland, massive growth happening in that area, tens of thousands of new properties planned, and we're going to deliver that modern, high-quality light rail to give those people light rail transport choices. Whether it's the eastern suburbs of Auckland, the electorates of Pakaranga and Botany, currently the worst-served areas for quality public transport in the whole of our region. And the plans that this government have will open up 
uh, options for high quality public transport through dedicated busways into those communities and give those people real choices about how they move around and free up our roads for the people that need to drive and the freight that needs to use those roads. And Madam Speaker, the other key part of the vision that we have here, it's a vision of safe and vibrant communities. Over the past five years, Madam Speaker, uh, the number of serious uh, injuries and deaths on Auckland's roads has skyrocketed by 60 per cent. That is a scandal. That is real people losing their lives, real people being injured because we have forgotten, the previous government forgot, to invest in the safety that we need in a growing city. And this plan, Madam Speaker, specifically funded from the regional fuel tax, puts the investment in to make sure that we have safer streets for our communities, to make sure that our kids have the options to safely walk and cycle to school, as many of us did, but it's simply not safe to do so because of the congestion, because of the traffic on our roads these days. Madam Speaker, the plan that we are delivering, um, supported by this bill, supported by the $4.3 billion of extra transport investment that this bill leverages, will make Auckland's roads safer, it will make our communities more vibrant, it will make our businesses more efficient, and it will finally deal with that issue of congestion, the sheer frustration that 1.5 million Aucklanders face every single day on our roads. 1.5 million Aucklanders are crying out for a government to finally do something about this problem. Most importantly, Madam Speaker, this plan funds those projects because it's all very well to get up in this House and talk about what you're going to do, to put some ideas down on a piece of paper. But unless you front up with the funding, it don't count for anything. And that is the status of the projects that were tabled by the previous government in its dying days in August of last year. This project funds um, the Auckland Transport Alignment Plan, a $28 billion package, by leveraging uh, the regional fuel tax, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it is time for some vision for Auckland. It is time to unclog our roads. It is time to give people real transport choices. After nine years of drift, this government is taking action and this bill is at the centre of it. I commend it to the House. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, there's no qu question that... Uh